Hello and welcome to the Heat Check Podcast, the Miami Herald's Miami Heat Podcast. I'm David Wilson and I'm joined in person by Anthony Chang, our Heat beat writer here at the Herald. Anthony, what's up? What's up? This kind first, of strange. I know, first time we've done one of these friends pre-pandemic? No, we yeah, did. We did one Summer in League. person. Summer League was Summer it? League, we did one. Did we do one in here in the arena? At one we point? might have done one here in the arena at some point, too. There just haven't been many. That's the yeah, point. not a whole lot. Um, and it was a very, uh, a very special night to do one because the Heat had one of the worst shooting performances uh, pretty much anyone has ever seen in the history of playoff basketball uh, has them now on the brink of elimination down 3-2 to the Celtics. Game 6 coming on Friday. That could be the Heat season. Um, there's a lot of different places I think we could start tonight. Um, let's start with the shooting, though, because that is – that kind of ultimately – I mean, I, I say that – I was about to say that that's what did them in, but you could if you look at Jimmy Butler's shooting performance. You could look at – uh, at a no show, like a, a very like literal no show, essentially from Kyle Lowry, who was pretty close to like a trillion, essentially. Obviously, yeah, he yeah, took yeah. the shots, but right. um, the shooting was historically bad. Thirty-eight missed threes, uh, second most in a single playoff game in NBA history. I think I saw second lowest three-point percentage ever uh, in a playoff game for a team with at least forty attempts. Uh, seven for forty-five is not very good. No. Even no. Spo looked at the box score and was like, "Oh, that's pretty bad." Yeah, he's like trying to explain, and he's like, "Whoa, like, yeah, I can't can't justify this." Um, yeah, it's kind of. I mean, it's bad, but when you think about how good of a shooting team, you're right. That's this was the best shoot, three-point shooting team in the league. Like, it's shocking how much their shooting has fallen off a cliff. And you can say, okay, the defenses are better. Duncan is not playing as many minutes, but. You just it's hard to explain. I mean, they're getting open looks. Max Struess had open looks today. PJ Tucker had open looks. Jimmy, they were just daring him to shoot threes. Right. I know he's not a great three-point shooter, but still, Kyle Lowry, 0 for 5. Um, even Duncan, 3 for 10. I, I don't, it's hard to really explain. Shots just aren't going in at the worst possible time for this team. Um, and, you know, they played fine defense, especially in the first half. Yeah. The first half, their defense I mean, what was really the score? Was 42 to 37? Yeah, they like, held up to 37 points in the first half. It's like a half. Miami high basketball game. If they have an average shooting first half, they're up by like by 20. Right. But they were only up by 5 because they couldn't make a shot either. Yeah, I mean, the um, start of the game, I think it what, started over 6, maybe over yeah, 7. Like, like yeah. it, was, it was kind of the similar similar to yeah. the uh, two nights earlier where – what were they, one for 12 or something like that to start, and just that game was never competitive because the defense wasn't there this time. The defense, like you said, kept them around for a while, got a lot of points off turnovers in the first half, a lot of offensive rebounds. Um, some good, I thought some good Duncan Robinson minutes in the first half especially. Yeah, Not making things, a lot of shots, but opening things up. Things a up. Bit, yeah. um, very good Gabe Vincent minutes in the first half, some good Caleb Martin flashes, uh, but... Ultimately, across the board in the offensive end, just not good nights really from anyone. Um, Jimmy Butler, obviously, not even, no. I don't know, 50%, something like, like it. He, he's not even trying to go past people. Kyle Lowry uh, hasn't, you know, all playoffs, has, has not been the same guy that he was at the start of the year, and obviously we know he's dealing with a hamstring injury. Um, no Tyler Hero, who has not been great in the playoffs, but obviously that's your second best shot creator, basically, on Maybe the team. Best. Maybe your best. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Max Struess, I mean, that like maybe he's dealing with an injury, we don't know, but his, like, what, 0 for, what was he, 0 for 7 tonight? Not a good two-game stretch. 0 for Max 9 Struce. and 0 for 7, I think, in the last two. So, like, you know, there's, there's some, you know, obviously the Heat's not making excuses, but with some guys there are, with, with other guys, the shooters especially, yeah. it's just uh, inexplicable. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy, he had four free throws tonight. I think he has like six free throws in the last three yeah. games. Went to the line, I believe, 18 times in game one. Right. <laughs> that just says shows you right there, A, like they're playing a little differently, mm -hmm. kind of playing off of him and um, not playing him as tight, which has ruined his kind of like uh, getting downhill. It hasn't allowed him to get downhill. And also, he's just not 100%. Yeah. And again, they're not making excuses. They were asked about this. Four or five times post game, <laughs> and their answers were all the same. They're not making excuses, yeah. and they shouldn't. I mean, no. Boston's hurt. Yeah, too. Boston. I mean, Jason Tatum. Yeah. In the, I mean, he was. I think he wound up pretty good numbers probably on the night because I think he made yeah, some he shots well in, the in the second, second half. half. But in the first half, he was worse than Jimmy Butler was. Yeah, and and Marcus Smart is playing through a sprained ankle, and Robert Williams still lingering. He can't hard. move at all. It doesn't look yeah. like. So I mean, yeah, maybe the Heat's injuries are worse. Obviously, Mikhail doesn't look like anything close to himself. Jimmy yeah. doesn't look like anything close to himself. Tyler's not even playing, which is. One of their top scorers, as you said. So, 
It's tough. I mean, it was going to be tough to beat this team, I think, even whole. But when your best offensive players, yeah. three of your best offensive players are not 100% and one isn't playing against a defense like Boston, there's just – it would take a huge upset. Yeah, I mean, they team. got 13 combined points from Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, and Tyler here tonight. Yeah, like, that's just and, – and you're, you're not going to win playoff games like that. It reminds me a little bit, and we talk, talked about this briefly before we started recording, about the of the Milwaukee series. Oh, yeah. Different personnel – but Boston has taken a page off of, out of Milwaukee's playbook as far as just playing off of Miami, sagging a bunch of guys into the mm-hmm. paint, giving open shots, and Derek Miami to beat them in the mid-range in three. And the Heat shot 10 of 52 from outside the paint today, 19%. Like, you're, not, you're just not winning any yeah. game shooting that poorly. Yeah, it's – so, obviously, we're talking about teams that have done that to them. We're talking about Milwaukee, which won yeah. the title last year. We're talking about Boston, which might be the favorite to win the title right now. Um is this uh, a th- this style of defense the teams are playing that the Bucks and now the Celtics, like you said, are playing against the Heat? Like, why has anyone else done this? Or is it a thing that because of how good these two teams have been defensively, it's something they can do against this yeah, team? Yeah, I think you need to have the personnel. Yeah. I mean, they have, the, like, Milwaukee has Brooke Lopez back there. who's a great right. room protector. And this That's team has, Giannis. And Giannis, right, he's pretty good, too. And this <laughs> team has Robert Williams, who's, again, a lead mm-hmm. room protector and a bunch of great perimeter defenders where they can be aggressive yeah. on the outside, too, and are long where... They don't have to play up on you to bother your shot. Right. How many times did like Robert Williams sagging off of PJ Tucker in the weak side tonight? PJ Tucker looks open, and Robert Williams, you know, runs to him, closes out, and blocks his shot. I think it was like two times yeah. tonight. I mean, it's just the closing speed on some of these Celtics defenders is impressive, and they were the top defense in the NBA for a reason. Yeah. Um, Heat's half court offense, as we have stated many times. Right. In it's this been podcast, the weakness all year long. Been their weakness all year long, and. That was the big concern entering the series. Can the Heat's half court offense produce some like consistent offense against the best half court defense in the NBA? And they haven't been able to do yeah. that. And you know, Boston's had more stretches of more good offensive stretches, and that's been the difference in the series, really. Yeah, that's kind of like you're talking about the, their closing speed on the perimeter. That's why I like those Duncan Robinson minutes he gave him in the first half because it wasn't you know he didn't get a lot of shots. I think he was like one for four in the first half. Maybe yeah. one. Two for five or he something had the like that. Too. They had like two. And he hit, yeah. Well, I'm talking about just yeah, from three. Yeah. yeah, he had the the runner also, but it was always like, you know, we know how much he runs and, and curls around guys, and, and he's just bringing two guys. He's forcing a switch or whatever, or someone to go over, and just got the whole thing moving. Like there were there were long possessions in in that first half, and I thought it, you know, not that the Heat were again they scored 42 points, which is like terrible. But, like, at least they were, like, kind of moving and getting stuff. Um, I, I think they need that kind of, like, moving. motion. <laughs> right, I think it, like, right? I mean, how many times that, yeah, that's yeah. an NBA, like... No, it's true. Yeah. I mean, they got to do that against Boston. Right, right? that's yeah. what they're going to have to yeah. do. And, and, you know, looking at games, at game six, um, you know, unless Jimmy Butler has, like, a miraculous recovery, like, they're going to need to kind of manufacture offense in a different way than just having, you know... Most of these big playoff games has been Jimmy time, and yeah. that's that can't that in all likelihood is not going to be the case in Game Six. I, I think we're gonna, obviously we're going to they're going to need a lot of Bam, um, and I think if, if you compare him and Duncan, I think it could be a starting point. But if you're not going to hit your shots, you don't have a lot of answers. And again, like if you're like our secret to winning here is we're going to do the Duncan Bam two man game for 48 minutes, that's, yeah. you're not going to win. That's- that's playing into Boston's hand. Although I yeah. do agree with you that like that is one thing they should try. Right? Yeah. And they tried it tonight, and again, it, it didn't result in a lot of makes. Yeah, but you, I mean, you watch yourself. There was a, a, a sequence there, like late, maybe yeah. fourth quarter, where like I think it was Duncan and Bam like kept doing like a dribble handoff, and it was like they did it like th- I think eventually actually Duncan made a three off of it, mm-hmm. but they like did it three times, like just kind of weaving around each other. Like Boston is really good at, at moving around and. Um, Getting out on shooters. Yeah. And, and some of it, too, I mean, Eric Spolcher said it after the game. There were there were some open looks. There were a lot of Right, yeah, there were. I mean, if you and take just, 40, what are it, 45, 7 for 45, yeah. like, it means you're getting looks. Yeah, they're getting good looks. It's just, or not all good looks, but some good looks, and they're just not going in. And they're not even close. No, there were, how many, how many air balls were there? Today? I think there were more, if you count the block, PJ got blocked once yeah. in the corner, I think there were as many air balls as makes yeah. from three. Because... Victor on the two, like, and back to that. Maybe he hit the rim, but whatever. I'm counting those because they were so ugly. Uh, Jimmy had one. I think Kyle had one. Like, 
Yeah, they, they, they missed 38, and like 30 of them weren't close. Wearables. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, we, I think we know that the Heat's outboard offense really can't score against right. the Celtics outboard defense. So I, we, the way they can win is basically by scoring off a turnover. Right, which is what they did points, in the first half. Which is what they did in the first half. That was their best offense. That was the only reason they were even ahead. They had 16 second chance points and 12 points off turnovers. That was 28 of their 42 points. In the first half. In the first yeah. half. Um, and that dried up in the second half. And that kind of is why Heat's offense was even worse in the second half. Yeah. Um, so, again, we know that half-court-wise, he can't really have it, don't have anything for the Celtics defense. They have to find a way to turn over Boston mm-hmm. like they did in games one, game one and in that first quarter of game three. I mean, that's the recipe right. for success for them. Can they do it again for 48 minutes? It's hard to do. I mean, especially with so many guys hurt, like we've talked about, and, and Boston – because Boston has more weapons at this point, offensively. Right. Um, so, I don't know. It's I think the Celtics are already an eight-and-a-half-point favorite in game six. Yeah. Um, it would take a big upset for the Heat to come back here and force a game seven. Yeah, so, I mean, we saw the, the template in game three, right, which was, like, embrace the rock fight yeah. of it all. And, um, like you said, that's getting turnovers, getting offensive rebounds. Um, you know, ultimately, it's kind of been like the joke of the, the series is that like the quarter by quarter thing. Yeah. And I mean, it was kind of the case again tonight. It was just, you know, the Heat, obviously, the two games they've won, they've had a monster first quarter in, in mm-hmm. game three and a monster third quarter in game one, right? Yeah, I think it was the yeah. third quarter of that game. Yeah. Um, this game, it was, you look at the quarter by quarter, it was close. The Celtics had the one run. So that that's the template to win, right? Is. If you can turn it into a rock fight, you just need to be the team that has that the hot big, shooting big stretch. Rock, yeah. um, so that that's the one way you can you can win in game six. Either that or you get the 25, you can make 25 threes instead yeah. of miss 38, and all of a sudden you come back to game. I mean, it's going to be hard to win two in a row the way that this team looks right now, but, um, you know, you, you, can, you can manufacture a win up in Boston. Like you said, it's going to be really hard. They're eight and a half point underdogs. That line might grow the way that yeah. things are looking. Um but yeah, it's gonna be tough. But I, I, mean, I think they like they're. It's not hopeless. It's not like well, no, because I mean, it's such a small sample size, and that's the way the NBA works. Yeah, and I again, we keep saying like it's gonna happen, and it hasn't happened yet. But at some point, this team you would think would have a great shooting game. Right, that's the point. Shooting game. They're shooting like you know thirty percent on threes in the playoffs so far after shooting thirty seven percent in the regular season. Do you do you like? I mean, you asked. Bam about it tonight, and there was like no, no response. No like, I mean, do you I have it? Like, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on what what's well, happening? Well, I think I mean, a you're facing better defenses, right? And B again, like we talked about, Duncan isn't playing as much. He's probably still your best three point shooter, right. volume wise, mm-hmm. him or Max Struess. Um, but one of them isn't playing with Duncan, so I think that's a factor. And also, teams like Boston, they've really taken away a lot of the sh- three point shots Miami likes. Like a lot of guys who don't mo- normally take threes are taking threes. Like Caleb Martin, Victor Oladipo. Mm-hmm. Those are the guys who don't want to take right. threes. And also the corners, I don't know what the numbers were tonight, but in Boston, uh, the Celtics really took away the corner threes. Yeah, I mean, PJ got guard. blocked in the corner today, yeah. which like, it's just like a one moment that yeah. kind of reminds you how good they are getting over there. This, the Heat in the regular season took the highest percent of the corner threes. Mm-hmm. Big part of their offense. And Teams have taken that away. Philly took that away as well. That right. was part of the heat struggles in that series. So I think teams scheme better, and I guess that's part of the explanation. But this big of a drop off is kind of just hard to really wrap your mind around and and not think like some of it's just missing shots. Right. Yeah, and then it's like marginal stuff too, right? Like Kyle Lowry's a good three point shooter, right? And, and he's, he's been yeah. horrible because yeah. he doesn't have his legs under him. Um, obviously, you mentioned Duncan, like. You're losing that, whatever yeah. for whatever reason, Max Schroes has been really bad lately. That's what Jimmy, um, Jimmy turning into the actually, Judy, Jimmy, <laughs> yeah. I mean, although with the last couple of games, he might be kind of yeah. starting to equal, uh, yeah, finding his level back. a little bit, but um, it's, it, it is kind of crazy. I think entering tonight, they were like 31% on threes in the playoffs, that they're even this far, like yeah. they made it this far shooting that poorly, yeah. It's just the fact that Jimmy's just been great, you know, they're pretty much, been pretty yeah. Great. But if you would have told me that they were going to shoot 32%, 31%. Three rounds into the playoffs, and they'd be six wins away from a title. I would be like, "There's no way." Yeah, they need. They rely on the three point shooting, and they've been able to overcome it for the most part. But so in this series, they haven't. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like I said, the, the, it starts with the three point shooting tonight, but they've been able to overcome yeah. that. Obviously, nothing like this they've been able to no, o- able not. to overcome all all playoffs. But 
they've been able to overcome whatever their shooting struggles are because of Jimmy Butler. And obviously, he didn't play the third quarter or the, the second half of game three with uh, the knee injury acting back up. Since then, he's seven for 32 in the next few games. And before that, he was shooting 53% from the yeah. field in the playoffs. Like, he's obviously, like you said, they, they've done a lot of good defensive stuff on him. And it's some of both, obviously, but he just clearly has not been the same since whatever he did to re-aggravate that injury in Game yeah. 3. Yes, and, uh, yeah, I mean, again, they, they made this far because Jimmy was the best player in the, in the playoffs at this point. And Jimmy is not even close to that these last two games. Um, and, again, I, I don't know how many ways to say it, but <laughs> this team is just – I think it's reached a point where it can't overcome the shooting struggles, and now the injuries are at a point where it can't overcome the injury. I mean, they were able to win without Kyle Lowry for most of right. the playoffs. Um, but now you have, you know, very limited Kyle Lowry, a limited Jimmy Butler, no Tyler Hero. It's just too much for them to overcome. They won't make any excuses for it ever, um, but there's no denying that that's a huge factor in this series. Yeah, there's like four things that yeah. like you could look at the box score and be like, oh, there's no way they're going to win a playoff yeah. game if that happened. There's no, no way they're going to win a playoff game if that happened. Um, and a bunch of them happened tonight, yeah. and it was ultimately not a very close game. No, and, and this the Heat have been really good when they hold teams under 100 points. I think yeah. Eric Spolcher even mentioned this. I don't know the record off the top of my head, but they haven't lost many times. Right. And that's happened. And they held the Celtics at 92 points. They were good enough defensively. Second half, yeah. issues, but for the most like part... Like I said, it was one quarter. Game. thirty. They gave up 32 yeah. in the third. The other three quarters, 17, 20, 24. Yeah. And obviously the fourth is a lot of garbage. Their time, defense but. has held up for the most part, mm-hmm. even in this series. Their defense has been pretty good. I mean, they've, like, shut down Jason Tatum. Yeah. They've, you know, Jalen Brown has gotten his, but also, like, just turned the ball over a ton. And that's probably the reason they won game three is because he was kind of so sloppy with the ball. Um yeah, I mean, uh, across the board, they've they've been great defensively. This was kind of the, what, you know, what I thought the series was going to look like. I'm kind of surprised we hadn't had a yeah. a ninety to eighty rock fight yet. My lead for my story today was, if anybody's interested, <laughs> that the, we finally got the defensive slug, competitive defensive slugfest we all envisioned in the first half. But the second half, it really the Celtics kind of just dominated. Yeah, they got up about I think seventeen yeah. at one point, and it was just like yeah, it was over. Um, Something in the water in Miami right now where the offense is falling apart. I was going to say, are you, I mean, you were, you were covering the Panthers a lot during the playoffs. Like, are you kind of bringing the bad luck to I to guess. Serena? I guess. My first game, first my first game, playoff game of the, the year. Worst, is, one of the worst offensive performances. Although not even their worst, season. not even their worst offensive performance in the playoffs, right? Didn't they have 79 in a, in a, one of those Philly really games? Probably. Really so, good, yeah. I mean, like we said, it's not unusual that this is, like, obviously a lot of the stuff they did tonight was, like, kind of historically bad, but, like, it was all the flaws, you know, even the thing, uh, a talking point from that Jimmy's had all year long, the defense struggling when the offense struggles. That happened in the third quarter tonight, definitely, or just kind of like, you're going to break eventually, right? right? Like, you can't be perfect for, like, yeah, that's just not how the NBA works. You, you can't hold teams to 80. Like, you yeah. can't, you can't no. bank on it. And, and it's also just like, it's easier to play defense off the makes. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah, you can like, say your defense. It could be that simple, yeah. you know, like, Teams usually average more points per possession when they're playing off of uh, right. a main. I mean, a miss rather than a main. So the Heat too. I mean, the Heat are much better when uh, are much better offensively when the Celtics are making shots. Right. I mean, it's just that simple. So yeah, it works hand in hand. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, like Bam on a bio. There were a few times he got the ball tonight, and you hear the crowd like yeah. basically trying to get him to shoot and look at the basket. There's been so much talk, especially with Jimmy and Kyle limited, that he has to do more. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you think that's the answer? Yeah, I mean, I think he needs to be better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, I, like I said uh, kind of earlier on, like, whatever, you know, the, the thing with, you know, we talked about it earlier in the year when they, obviously he and Jimmy kind of did their, like, co-lead mm-hmm. ball handler thing the last couple of years, and you had Kyle in, took a little bit more away from him. When Duncan fell out of the rotation or out of the full minutes, like, a huge, that's a huge part of his game is his, Strength in those dribble handoffs and in that two man game. Um, like, it got kind of turned back the clock a little bit to last year, I think, and, and dig back into to some of the old stuff they were doing um, because that is their best hope. And again, like, everyone wants you, uh, Bam to be this guy who can take guys in the post. And I, and I get it when he's up against 
Jalen Brown or something. Like, yeah, yeah or, and not, I mean, even Jalen Brown's, like, better than, yeah. like, he's a good defensive player, but, like, when he's got Robert Williams on him or Grant Williams on him or even Marcus Smart on him, like, those aren't easy matchups for him to just back a guy down well, and like get a, a hook shot. Yeah, like, this team's times, really good yeah. defensively. Um, you know, if you get the Peyton Pritchard switched on him, yeah, sure. Like, there haven't been many of those. Exactly. So, um, I think, you know, Bam, you know, you can count on one hand the number of guys who, who can, like, dominate the game from the post anymore. Yeah. At, at, like, other than, like, I mean, that's Canter's not in the league right now, but, like, a, a guy who's actually, like, doing it for you on both ends, who's going to play significant minutes. It's like Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic. Even Giannis doesn't really do it that. Like, it's very rare to see that traditional scoring big man now. But we have, like, this year we've kind of been robbed of some of the other great stuff Bam can do, right? His assist numbers yeah. are down. Um, and, again, it's been for the benefit of the team because right. they have more options. Yeah, Kyle's running more things. But like Kyle's, like, a non-factor now. Yeah. And Jimmy is something closer to what he is in the regular season when he likes to defer a little bit more, or that's what he probably should be right now. I, I think Bam has to dominate in game six, but he has to do it in his way. Yeah. And I think that's that's always the, the predicament with Bam is everyone wants him to do dominate one way, but what makes him a great defensive player is, is not, I think, you know, just begging him to back down against yeah. every time he gets the ball. That's just not who Bam is yeah. at this point of his career. And I don't know if he'll ever be that. I mean, no. he's a, an elite defender, maybe the best defender in the NBA. And he's a capable offensive player, but he's not a guy you're just going to ISO 30 times and let him go to work. Yeah. Most time. I mean, maybe when he has a good matchup on him, but against the Celtics, there just aren't that many great matchups. You mm-hmm. know, Horford, I know he, he will have success against Horford in game three, but with Robert Williams back, um, he has a lot of help back there. So, yeah. you know, um, you can't clear things out as, as much as they did in game three for Bam. Um, and, you know, some of it just comes down to banning those mid-range jumpers because they're giving him space. Right. But that's not that's not a recipe for consistent all. Like, right, yeah. Like, if, if you're relying on Bam to give you 30 and hit eight mid-range jumpers and try to drive past Al Horford repeatedly, like, you're again, you're playing into the Celtics' hands. Like, that's not a way you're going to win most games. Yeah, maybe Bam can go off one time for 30 points in game three, but mm-hmm. more often than not, Celtics are probably going to win if you're trying to do that. Yeah, the, um, you know, Bam is... He's probably a better scorer than Draymond ever was. I agree. I mean, he averaged close to 20 points a game right. this year. But he is, like, let's say if Steph Curry was out for the Warriors, I'm talking prime Draymond, you weren't going to be like, all right, Draymond, ISO. For, yeah, right. Like, that's Go like, for 35. Right, like, that's not what yeah. Bam's strength is. And, you know, maybe that means he's never going to be a number one option. And that's probably right. He's probably never going to be a number one option. But there are other ways he can control a game and win a game. You gotta. I mean, it's kind of like game three, right? It's like... Bam hit some big shots in that game, obviously. Um, but they won that game not because of Bam's singular excellence. They right. won it because of their defensive effort, obviously, which Bam is a huge part of, um, because of just, like, they're smart, like, yeah. you know, everyone chipping in offense when Ma- they Boston's can. Boston's, like, 20 turnovers. Right, yeah. and, and that's all – Bam makes other people better. He's not going to be a, yeah. like, ISO scorer on I also think he had six assists in the game. Yeah, right. right. Like, assists where they were playing through him. So that's right. Like, so that's I think that's what they need best. to get back yeah. to. I think in Game Six, and and I get it. You know, they it was hard to do it tonight because, um, you know, like what they were doing in the first half, they were led at halftime. Like you weren't right. just like be just like, change the way you play. Right. Do, do you think Kyle Lowry should play? Like, do you think I don't, he should be I mean, starting? No. If he's this, like, if that's what he is right now, like Gabe Vince is better than him. Gabe Vincent gave him yeah. really good minutes tonight. I mean, Gabe Vincent's not a better basketball player than Kyle Lowry. Right, but right, at this but right point, now, this where Kyle Lowry is, what was the stat you had? It's 0. 0.0 assists for the first time in his career in a game where he plays 15, More than 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Like, that's not like, good. like, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be yeah. worse, but I could do that. You could do that. <laughs> I could do that, too. Um, yeah, I mean, it's tough because if he wants to play and feels healthy enough to play, how do you tell him not? Yeah, no. But point. he can be your backup point. Like he can. I mean, I, whatever. If you want to start him, but yeah. like, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying like, it's, a, it's not as easy as. No, that. it's yeah, obviously. I've seen on Twitter and all that. Like he shouldn't start. Gabe Vincent should be starting. Kyle Lowry brought him in here for these type of moments. You're starting point guard. He feels healthy enough to play. You feel health. You feel like he's healthy enough to play because you're. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, like ideally, Kyle Lowry would be like, 
get right. the like with the like hand of your jersey, yeah. right? Like yeah. remember the Titans Same or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll just be off the bench and play ten minutes. Yeah, because um, he can still like you know he still runs the offense right. like or what? Like it's not like he is like just killing you when he's out there. Right. Although he kind of killed me tonight, but it's yeah he. Uh, I think, in my opinion, they just reached the, the road. I mean, maybe in a week we think we see things they shock us and they're in the NBA finals, mm-hmm. but between the injuries, um, how limited their offense looked, and again, that's been a concern all year, and they really they run into the best defense in the league. Right. Um, it just It's going to be tough to win these last two games in a row with all the adversity they're facing. Can they have a big three-point shooting night? Yes. And maybe they win a game six like that and force a game seven where anything can happen, but it's just hard to envision right now based on how this team looks and based on some of their best players look because of different injuries. Yeah, it's um, it's dire, yeah. <laughs> certainly. Um, you know, not surprising. They were underdogs in this yeah. series, even though they were the home team and the higher seed. They were underdogs um, tonight. Were they underdogs tonight? Yeah, home underdogs. Oh, yeah, they're I think like one and a half point. Yeah, you're right. Point. I think it fell to three and a half after Tucker's uh-huh. injury. So, I mean, like, they're, like you said, they kind of hit the end of the road a little bit. Yeah. Um, the hallmark of this team, you know, like game three when – Jimmy goes out at halftime, like, you would have thought they were going to probably lose that game. I don't know what, like, the live line would have been. But certainly once it got down to one or whatever it did in the third quarter, like, you know, the hallmark of this team is their toughness and their moxie or whatever. And, again, like, the good thing about Kyle and Jimmy, even when they're limited, you know, it's like I talked about with, with, with Jimmy last week or two weeks ago, like, I think his game's going to age well because yeah. he can control the game and all that. Um but I think I think it has to be Bam on on Friday. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It has to be Bam and the shooters, right? Like the the that was supposed to be the bailout option, right? Yeah. Like the good thing, the way this team is constructed, we've talked about it a million times. Jimmy and Bam are not three point shooters, so the way the team is constructed, they have all these great three point shooters around these two guys who steer the offense, and that means you can win on nights when you're not shooting because Jimmy usually can be incredible. And you can win on nights when Jimmy is in pass mode because the three-point shooters make shots. You can't win on a night when both those things don't happen. Yeah, yeah. I think I picked Keaton seven um, before the series, but obviously I did not see all of the right. issues that they're currently facing happening. Um, but, you know, again, they're, they're still alive, as, as Eric Spolcher would say. Yeah. Anything could happen in one game, but, um, yeah, Boston certainly looks like they're probably on their way the finals just based on so many different things. Mm-hmm. Do, do you think um, whatever happens in game six, I, in my opinion, I think this has been a successful heat season. They've, they've maxed out yeah. this team, especially when you consider, again, the injuries they're facing now. Like I think, for the most part, this has been a very successful heat season. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk more about this, obviously, next week if, if they lose in six or seven, yeah. but I think, I mean, it was I mean, they will get the one seed in the yeah. East and went to the conference finals for the Second time in three years, they beat Boston two years ago. Right. Whatever they might, they're on the verge of losing to them now. Um, they, you know, they're they're two very even yeah. teams, and if a couple breaks go a couple different ways, you know, if, if Jimmy or or Tyler are healthy, maybe they win this game and then lose game. You know, right. this, this is a seven game series, this is probably. probably be a seven teams, game series we'll yeah, if both teams were healthy. Um, they're very even, um, and in this year. That means you're maybe the second best team in the league, third best team in the yeah. league. Um, it, it's a wide, like we said, coming into the conference finals. Any of the four teams there can win it. Still kind of feel the same way now, even with the Warriors going up 3-0. Like, yeah. you know, if, if Dallas stormed back, you'd have to think. They'd have a great shot to win the championship. So, like, I, I agree. Yeah, it's a successful season. The, the question that's going to be the big thing going into the offseason is what is this team's window, right, yeah. because of – how old Jimmy is because of how old Kyle is and how old he looks right now. Again, a lot of that, the injury, but missed a lot of time this year between it. Like this was the concern with this team, right? It right. was, they're old, their old guys get hurt. It's just a shame because this is the, I mean, Kyle was a lot of games in the regular season because of mm-hmm. a personal issue, right. but this is really the first yes, that's time true. he's missed because of an injury. Um, so it's just bad, really bad timing, obviously. Right. And it, it's, it's also, kind of, I'm sure, disappointing for the Heat only because two years ago, 
they were two wins away from a title. Injuries also played a little right. bit series when you're missing, you know, Bam and Abayo for a few games. And even yeah, and the weird on that was it was Bam Goran, who's a young guy. Yeah. Goran was obviously older. Yeah, um, but Goran so. was really great. That yeah. arguably the best offensive player that postseason. He's out, you know, because of foot injury. Um, and now it's happening again with a different guy. So just bad timing. Um, but a lot of times in the playoffs, it's the healthiest team, right? Mm-hmm. Though that's a lot that's left standing. Should we wrap up with the Panthers minute? Yeah, I guess. Go ahead. There isn't much to talk about. No, not a whole lot to talk about. Um, they scored three goals in four games, which is not great. Um, they hadn't been shut out all season, right? Hadn't been shut out all season. Wow. And that was probably the best game they played of the entire playoffs, and they got shut out. So, you know, Their goalie, the Tampa, Bay's light, Tampa Bay's goalie is really good. That's yeah, he might be the best goalie, goalie of all time. That's my one takeaway. He's only 27, game. could win a third straight cup this year. You know, the list of all-time goalies is like Martin Brodeur. And right. and Dominic. Dominic Hasek, but Hasek doesn't have the rings. Yeah. And, but he and, once had a really cool save where he came way out of the net and, like, tripped a guy. It was cool. I remember him when I was a kid watching him. Yeah. Um, yeah like, and, and Tampa, like, they block a lot of shots, too. Yeah, they're just like, uh, like the... Why are they still so into this? Like, they already won so much. Like, why are they... They, like, they, they kind of got some heat culture to them. It's crazy. I think the yeah. Panthers need to, uh, like, get in the gym with the heat. Like... Management needs to come by, and, and I know they did like yeah, they, they picked the brains of the other. Like a week where they were supposed yeah, to <laughs> with with Pat, and yeah. like you know, because Bill Zito I think is a really good GM, but uh, I think they need they need a little bit of heat culture up there in uh, interesting in Sunrise. Interesting. Yeah, I mean maybe the Heat can learn. Well, Panthers' offense wasn't that good in the playoffs, but yeah. maybe they can get some offensive tips from the Panthers, maybe, and they can yeah. give them some uh, some uh, defensive tips and you know, ways to get tougher. Well, it has been yeah. a uh, a fun. Uh, Spring here in South Florida. Yeah, um, busy too. And might be nearing the end of the road. Um, so what do you th- what, what's your prediction now? It's tough. It's tough to envision this heat. I don't put anything past them because yeah. they've surprised us all year with these improbable mm-hmm. wins. Um, but after make, if I have to make a prediction, I think the Celtics win in six, just based, again, on all the injuries and the momentum the Celtics have going back to Boston. Boston's a very tough place yeah. to play. Um, it's just going to be really, really surprising, I think, if they win that game. And if they do, I mean, anything can happen in Game 7, right? Yeah. Especially when you're playing at home. Um, but I just think it's going to be tough for them to even just force a Game 7. Yeah, I think it, they need that shooting game that we've been waiting on all yeah. the playoffs. And, you know, the further you get, you're like, ah, oh, it's going to come eventually. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, oh, maybe they, maybe they just yeah. don't have it for whatever reason. So... Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough to envision this team going up there and winning. Like you said, they're a pretty significant underdog. Um, Jimmy is, you know, the – like if Jimmy was 100% healthy and they just had a loss like this and yeah. were like weird outlier right. Jimmy performance, right. I'd have been like, you know, right. maybe you well, get Scott Kyle's Foster in, in there. <laughs> like we're, we're going coming back yeah. to, to Miami. Um, but right now the way that Kyle and Jimmy look, I, I think it's, it's tough to envision they're going to need. Like I said, good Bam, good Duncan – Good Struess, like they have some guys still, like you know we're talking about like Max Struess and Duncan Robinson mm-hmm. right now is like key guys for them, but they have guys. Those guys have been good all year long, and if they get great performances from those guys, they can win. But we're asking a lot, I think. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I think we got to wrap up. Because yeah, we we're, we're, sounds like out. we're about to get kicked out of this uh, <laughs> dressing room. I think is this Bernie's dressing room? I think it is. I yeah. think it is. Yeah. I think we're in Bernie's dressing room. Um, Anthony was going to wear the mascot head, but uh, it was a little too muffled yeah, yeah, the sound. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Um, you can follow Anthony on Twitter at Anthony underscore Chang. Uh, he'll be up in Boston for game yep. six. Um, and obviously, we'll have coverage all weekend long, no matter what happens, either getting ready for a game seven or the post mortem on, uh, like, like we said, a very fun heat season, uh, no matter how it ends. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at dbwilson2. Um, I got kind of all the postmortem Panthers stuff this week, and then we're, we're kind of yeah. we're into baseball territory. I have not the, watched like a second of it. I've no. covered three Marlins games this year, but other than that, I don't, think, I don't think I've watched a single <laughs> second of baseball. We're getting into Marlins time finally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, we'll maybe see. some people go to some games. We'll see. Maybe the Heat surprises, but yeah, um, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be tough. Um, I think we wrap things up there. Thanks as always for listening, and we'll talk to you guys next week.